Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Online Warriors podcast. Guys, this is a big one. The big kahuna. The big kahuna. Not just because we're talking about the Game Awards today, which happened last week, and there was a whole lot to talk about that we'll get into. But also, we have our fantastic guest on with us again, Mr. Stephen Keller. Stephen, great to have you back to talk Game Awards and all things Online Warriors podcast. How's life? How you doing? It's cold and snowy here right now. We got like four to five inches of snow last night, and then no. it it turned to rain. Is there? Is this one of those snows that like it's going to be melted in two days, or is it a snow that like um, it's going to be there until April? No, we're in a La Nina or whatever, so it's getting it's warm. Oh, is this the uh, what what do they call it? The atmospheric river? Is this the atmospheric river? Oh, we I had that know. all last week. We had rain all last week because of that atmospheric river. Atmospheric river. I'm going to throw this out there to the meteorologists uh, who I'm sure listen to this show a lot. You need to, you need a different term. It's not, it's not catchy enough. El Nino or La Nina. Those, those are great. I like just rain, rain, rainstorm. Yeah. For a second, like, I thought you said I just like Wayne. I was like, oh, we're going to call every storm Wayne. Yeah. Wayne's work. Monsoon is a good term. Nice and short and sweet to the point. Typhoon, also a good term. I actually don't even know if that's weather. Atmospheric river. It's a lot of syllables. And I assume what it means is just a very narrow band of rain that stretches for a long time, such that if you look at it on a weather map, it looks like a river. But I think there's a cooler name to be had. The wet so lane. That's worse. I think that's worse. That, that wet, the, the wet mile. lane. <laughs> that's better. That's funnier, at least. So I don't know. Meteorologists, put your head together, see what you can come up with. We got the Game Awards today. Game Awards happened last week, I believe last Thursday to be specific. It was a three and a half hour show with... A lot of awards, a lot of trailers. I think we're mostly going to be talking about the trailers today, but we could talk about the awards as well. There's a couple of, like, I would say main stories within the awards and also within the show itself. I know Technic wants to rant. Do I have that right, Technic? Are you looking to rant? Do you need to carve out some time? I'm becoming old man yells at clouds, so pick a day. I'm ready to rant. Old man, well, I pick today because I want to hear it. I think I think old man yells at clouds is in some sense, an appropriate response, because I, I too have my issues with the Game Awards. I will I will cop to not having watched the full three and a half hour broadcast, because as I said right before we went on the air, I think I have a philosophical disagreement with award shows. And this does, this is not just limited to the, the Game Awards. It's also, it includes the Oscars. I don't really know about the Grammys, actually. I don't want to throw the Grammys under the bus. I but... feel like the Grammys, you at least get to listen to music. Like there's a lot of performances, which like, that's what music it's awards should be about. Yeah, like the Grammys, I think maybe it just makes more sense to have an award show for music because you're basically just getting in between awards, you're getting music, which is probably what you, you if you like, if you're watching the Grammys, you probably like music enough to like listen to musical acts. If I show up to watch the Oscars or the Emmys or the Game Awards, typically what I want to see is who's winning the awards. I want to see people recognized appropriately for their technical achievements and be able to thank the people who got them to the point that they're at i don't want to see like i think in particular i want to bring up the i think it was the oscars the COVID oscars where like cedric the entertainer was just like doing bits for like probably two hours of the four hours of the show and like i didn't want that i think a lot of people didn't want it and it seems like the game awards i've seen a lot of complaints that the game awards are kind of doing the same thing of like really just eating up a lot of time with like bits and stuff that I would say the average viewer probably doesn't care about, and then like cutting people's speeches short. We'll get into all that. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of trailers here. I don't even know how we're going to go through all of these. We don't necessarily have a game plan. We just have a big stack of trailers. Steven, I'm going to turn it over to you. I mean, if there was one thing you wanted the listeners to take away from the Game Awards, or in particular, your experience with the Game Awards, what rustled your jimmies the most, or what de-rustled your jimmies the most what made you super happy or super unhappy i guess probably the happiest i was was jurassic park survival okay you know i was watching this and i was like this is a steven game for yeah sure. it's my favorite movie and playing game forms should be fun do you wish they showed less falling in the trailer i felt like that character was falling like non-stop I mean, you'd, you'd think they never had legs before you're gonna run and stumble when a dinosaur is chasing you and yeah, I mean, in mud and rain. I, I, I happen to remember up. that like Bryce Dallas Howard in the which I can't remember which one it was. 
fall it wasn't jurassic fallen kingdom. World. It was the one before that jurassic the world when she was like running in heels people were like you can't run in heels especially when you're being chased by a t-rex and like your head's not on straight so i think the falling is if anything probably pretty accurate i was honestly surprised this game hasn't been made yet like i know there's been a decent amount of jurassic park games and spinoffs and whatnot but like a true first person survival style game where there were a lot of callbacks to the original Jurassic Park movie, like the kitchen scene with raptors and even like the the T-Rex and you're trying, I believe she was trying to hide behind a vehicle. I might be wrong. I might just be making that up. I don't think so, though. Like a lot of those callbacks to the original movie, like I'm just surprised that nothing like this has been made yet. And I feel like there's a lot of people like Steven and, you know, like us, we all kind of grew up with Jurassic Park and this is dope. Yeah, I mean, Jurassic Park, so I totally agree. And like, the thing about Jurassic Park that like, when it first came out, I was a little bit on the young side to like, go to theaters and see it. But I know, like, you hear stories all the time of like, people being in the theater and being just completely blown away by the visual effects to the point that they would like, stand up and scream when the T-Rex appeared, like just freaking out. Like, you would think that showing dinosaurs in an accurate way, in the same way that it, it really, you know, served as a showcase for improvement in movie effects you would think it could serve as a similar showcase to like here's how good video games are now it's like we can give you the Jurassic park experience that you've seen in the movies but you can live it and like the story world itself of Jurassic park and the Jurassic park franchise is such that you can very easily stick a character in Jurassic park she might have even been there at the same time that the people in the first movie were there and you can just say she was there at the same time and she was on the you know she was in the jeep behind them or something and like it's fine that people aren't gonna I don't think people are going to grill the story as much. They're going to enjoy the fact that, oh my God, I'm in Jurassic Park and I'm trying to escape from Velociraptors. How do I do it? You know, I I do think it's a game that should have happened a long time ago. Is this going to be a VR game or is that just like my read of the trailer was like, this feels like they're going to VR it. Maybe just I'm sure they will way. at some point. Yeah, it, it's it's another thing that even in the VR sense, I'm surprised there hasn't been like a VR Jurassic Park. Again, even that could be like just you're in the Jeep and you're like looking around. You're not even moving. You're just like seeing dinosaurs. Like it seems like a potential VR showcase. But yeah, Jurassic Park Survival certainly looked like a good one. Nerd Bomber, I want to ask you, you, mm-hmm. you know, you are not a scary game person. Absolutely not. Is Jurassic Park Survival too scary? Oh, no. So- okay. I think my where my like scary meter goes is when you start getting like zombies or ghosts, like for whatever reason, a dinosaur jump scare does not get me the way that like a horrifying blood drippy guy with a chainsaw who's yelling at you gets me like I can do dinosaurs. I find that very interesting because like dinosaurs isolation. Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I have that. It's been on my backlog forever. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a, kind of the in-between. That might be a good test. Because that's the in be- Yeah, that's the in-between. Because, like, to me, dinosaurs are scary. Like, if I saw a dinosaur, my first reaction would probably not be one of wonderment. It would be like, I oh, God, I'm going to die. I to test this claim because I still think you're going to be a little scaredy cat. With Jurassic Park? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, with survival. Some context on this game, too. I, I Reading in the background as we're talking. This was a canceled... It's it's a revival of a canceled game from the early 2000s. So the, the question of, like, how has this not been done yet? I guess it was attempted and it died. Why it died, I don't exactly Maybe know. Maybe they had to wait for, like, the Jurassic World revival of the franchise to come around. It's very possible. I don't know that we got a release date for this yet. If we did, I don't have that information in front of me. And I'm probably going to say that about a lot of this stuff because I just have a bunch of trailers in front of me. But... So, Stephen, you said this one really, uh, really, really, you know, made you happy. Was there anything that you were like, gosh, darn it, this sucks, <laughs> I guess? I guess it would be a, I think it'd just be the playing off of winners and making us watch Gonzo the Great. That was very do strange. Do some rant about For chickens. Sure. I, I don't yeah. want to knock on Jeff Keighley too much because the Game Awards, I guess, wouldn't exist without him. But the direction of the entire show feels so weird at times like i don't know and i think last year didn't they have like a muppet or something show up too and it's just very confusing like why are you cutting off people in their acceptance speech and then dedicating time to that it's so weird to me yeah the term dog and pony show comes to mind and and like i was kind of getting at before it's like it's just it's rooted in them not knowing what people want and or it being self-serving like gonzo the great was probably in the show because jeff Keeley was like this is hilarious and i like it and this show is for me and like 
man it's not anymore even if it was initially it's not it's for the people who show up to watch it it's for gamers who again want to see people recognized for their for their achievements in gaming so like yeah I, it definitely rubs me the wrong way too and i like i think i was saying before there's a very large online discourse right now about the, all of that of like wh- why why are people getting played off for like you know I, I know at one point someone was thanking someone who had died or something and they got played off it's like okay that you got they got played off for some bit to happen like it just it doesn't feel right it almost feels like i know we don't have an official i mean e3 still kind of exists in some format like the association exists but we don't really have that like big event weekend like we did in the past and this kind of feels like it supplants that in a way it almost feels like they should be breaking it up into two events like one where you have a condensed award show and then that same weekend while you have everybody in town for you know you have the you know the big stage and everything then you can be like here's a showcase to follow up or to proceed it you know i I don't know i think no no. i think the game awards and the way they mix in the world releases the world premieres are great however i think the two shows is a great idea and i think they should do game of the year like q1 q2 and then q3 q4 because it feels like the year is so long that there's a lot of games that like man two didn't win just shush there's a lot of games that <laughs> that say come out in i don't know october that a lot of people don't get an opportunity to get their hands on and thus it doesn't get a fair shake as a quote game of the year when did Baldur's gate 3 come out though probably I like think, august was it, the, it was the latter half of the year so spider-man yeah. still would have gotten wiped with it i right but that, but okay um, well here, you have the floor I, I know you want to rant about this i know a lot of people are upset that spider-man 2 did not not only didn't win game of the year but also was blanked on like all of its seven nominations so you have played spider-man 2 steven i think you might have mentioned that you have played it or it's in your backlog i'm not sure but like you guys it seems like have a vested interest like i do not care which game won game of the year I will throw that out there. I didn't have a horse in the race. I don't think I played any I'm of the not nominees, saying. I'm but... not saying if you slap Spider-Man, it has to get Game of the Year every year. That is not what I'm saying. I want to be clear here. Game of the Year has a number of facets to it, and it does make sense that Baldur's Gate won Game of the Wor- Year, considering how many other awards it won. It won, for example, it won Player's Voice. It won Best RPG. It won, it won Best Community Support. And, and it goes on, a couple other ones. And so they obviously t- checked a lot of boxes to ultimately get Game of the Year. However, it coming out when it did, it's fresh in everyone's mind. It had a lot of time between when it came out and when these the voting started to sort of get a wide player base. And so my rant is really not so much that Spider-Man didn't get a fair shake, but rather... I don't think everyone's voting. And so the importance of voting, guys, it's 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 important to feel rep- <laughs> represented and have your voice heard so all my spider-man people we're getting we're getting outnumbered by Baldur's gate people we need to rise and vote next year do you see this because you know i like i like for me i transpose a lot of my oscars experience and like all the oscars that have happened like i think a lot of people would argue that best picture and like game of the year those awards tend to go to the uh, the movies or the games that have won the most other awards like it, it's it's really intended to be like this this game has achieved the most from a tactical perspective that was good therefore it is the game of the year like to put it another way it's not necessarily a popularity contest and uh, yeah i'm not saying that's what you were saying but like i guess I, I wonder if game of the year the award is seen that way of like okay well Baldur's gate won all these other things so therefore it wins game of the year or if it was a decision well, made with in that vacuum. said then alan wake too should have won game of the year because that was another strong contender, and and it aligned more with what you're saying. Yeah, and I think that one got hurt by being released so close to the deadline. Because I think Alan Wake was probably two to three weeks before the deadline for voting. It was, I think, in, in a similar time frame to Spider-Man Two, if I recall correctly. I think they were both in October. Which is a good argument for Spider-Man. Maybe it did get a fair, a fair shake, but I don't feel like it is because I loved that game. Do you know what I feel like didn't get a fair shake? So there were some awards where, you know, people, developers actually got to go up on stage and accept it and make a speech. And then there were some awards where Jeff Keighley did like six in a row, hot blitz. Nobody even got a chance to speak or anything. And like, how does that get to Well, again, it's the same. The Oscars did the same thing recently where they ripped a bunch of technical awards out of the show to make room for like musical numbers and people there was huge pushback on it because it's like no that's we want to see that we want to recognize the people who like win best editing we don't want it to get shoved to the pre-show 
that ties back into the show taking time to show all these world's premieres to what Nerd Bomber said, right? Do you break it up into the actual, like, bring E3 back, let's say, and do an actual game show? Or is this the format that we're just going to get? That's, that, I think that's a trickier question because, like, I think that putting world premieres in the award show... The people who show up and should be watching this show and caring about this show are gamers, right? And gamers, by and large, are going to care about, you know, world premieres, at least on a certain scale, like certain games that are a big deal. They're going to care about those. See, but here's the thing. There's a lot of games that get showcased for the, these votes and things like that, that some people are like, oh, wow, I didn't know that game was so well received. Now I'm going to play it, right? So instead of showing world premieres, you can show gameplay footage of the games that were winning that we're talking about. Yeah, honestly, if you think about like whenever there's any sort of award for anything, I think, don't they usually play a snippet of the game or not the game, but the song, movie, TV show, what have you? In, in, yeah, now we just got Imagine Dragons every time Baldur's Gate came out. <laughs> with, with the Oscars, I believe, yeah, they, they typically still do like play a clip showing an actor's performance before they're like, this person is nominated for this award, you know? Yeah, it's always about the Oscar reel for actors. Yes. Yeah. What's their Oscar moment in a movie that they'll play before during right. the announcement of... And so that's my point, is there's an argument to be made where instead of showing all these world premieres, will you showcase the games we're talking about, the games that are winning, and that there's a chance that... I mean, everyone's not playing every single one of these games, and they might have never considered them unless watching the show. I think... I, I And we can use this to like transition into our discussion of all the trailers that dropped, because I think there... I think there should be world premiere trailers in the show, but there should probably be less like there were a lot and i can understand using that to attract people to watching the awards themselves but it was jam-packed like you know we have an hour or so to sit here and talk through all the trailers that we saw but like we i'll tell you right now we are not going to get to all of them because they were just so many i will say like as a and we'll, we'll get into specifics we'll go around people can say what their favorites were and which ones they were most excited by you know we already talked a little bit about jurassic park survival but as a general over one there were a couple things that i noticed about these trailers i don't know if you guys picked up on this like i think a lot of trailers we saw with some exception were light on cinematics and heavy on gameplay which i appreciated a lot and i don't know if that was a function of it being the game awards where they know the audience is going to be gamers the other thing i noticed is not a lot of first person shooters like I, in fact i'm not even sure there was one which i don't know if that's becoming less There's common in first person shooters i don't know that i saw any or cared about, about any or remembered any maybe that's more a function of me but like I, I i don't know i didn't see much of that and i don't know if that's a, a a trend in the industry or what or if it's just again a function of me we can go around and you know do we, do we just kind of want to go around and start with people's favorites i know steven you already mentioned jurassic park survival you can toss another one in there i guess yeah, we'll start with you nerd bomber what what game blew you away the most or you know which, which game out of all these would you pick as your like day one buy? I think Exodus. And there's a there are a decent amount of good games shown here. As we all know, I'm a giant Mass Effect fan, and this thing gave me more Mass Effect vibes than anything that I've seen in the last little bit, which makes sense because it was, you know, made by a team of ex Bioware developers. And it just looked really cool. I really liked the different kind of powers that the players seem to have. Because the beginning of the trailer showed more of a cinematic, but towards the end, there was a very short snippet of gameplay. And it just looked like a, a very, you know, cyber kinetic sort of power driven third person shooter game. And I don't know, exploring the universe seemed cool. Like, I don't know. I like games about space and there really haven't been a whole lot of like story heavy games about space. Starfield is the last like story heavy game about space that I've played in a, a while. So I'm very excited for, you know, a new Mass Effect-esque space RPG. Well, this also looked like it has the potential to fill the void of, of Destiny as well. I think it had that style of gameplay where you can play with friends through various campaigns. See, I felt that did way it, about the first Descendant. Did it have co-op? Yeah, the, 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 it, the first Descendant looked to me more like the Destiny clone. And we, and we can talk about that game separately. But I, the Exodus, I'm not sure I saw enough to think, oh, this is going to be the Destiny re this replacement. This is the one that had... Will. Matthew McConaughey in it. I don't know if this is going to be Destiny-ish so much as like Destiny. When I think of Destiny, I think of like a multiplayer ever long game. And this yeah. seems like it's going to be more of a, you know, it's going to have a concise story. And I don't know. They also had Twilight music in it. So I did not pick up on the Twilight music. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I thought Exodus looks really impressive. I think the the story, the cinematic and the story they laid out, I liked. It, it crossed my mind. space and time shenanigans. Well, it crossed my mind. I was like, you know, I kind of wish that this had been the story of the game because it seems interesting. And it seems like the that's kind of the prelude to it. And what happens after is going to be what the game is, which is certainly fine. But yeah, I, I was definitely interested in this one. I will swing it over to... Well, I'm just, I'm just going to say myself. And I, I want to talk about this game not even so much because I liked I liked it. I just think it was one of the more interesting... You could argue it was the worst video game trailer ever. I'm, of course, referring I, to OD. I feel like you're going to do it. Oh, no. O- oh. OD, like... Okay. okay, here's the thing. Let me start by saying I'm not... Have I ever played a Hideo Kojima game? I don't know that I have. No. I like Jordan Peele a lot. I like the idea of a horror game. What was the point of this trailer? Exactly. How can you say that you're excited about it? I mean, it was just literally a compilation of, and and I know I'm going to upset people, of of Kojima being weird. Like, that's literally my notes. It's just him being weird. (laughs) It's a a Kojima trailer. Like, that's just what you get from him. Right, but like, how do we get excited without any game? This is going to sound a little offensive. I'm sure it's going to offend some people. But sometimes... Kojima games make me either feel like I'm an uncultured swine because I have no clue what the hell is going on. Other times, I think that we've all just tricked ourselves into thinking he's this like genius and we're all just dumb. So we should just get on board because it's smart and there's something there. Well, and I'm not convinced that there always is. I, I think what, like, obviously the touch point for me with Kojima is like, it's Death Stranding. And like, from what I remember, I, I know we talked about the first Death Stranding trailer that we ever saw. I know we talked about it on the show. I know it was weird. But it also like showed the was game. Was it good? It it, well, it it showed the game. Like it showed things happening. This was just like this was kind of out there for out there's sake. It, it was like the brown red fox jumps over the lawn. Right. It was it was designed to be, I think, like provocative of people being like, "Ooh, what is it?" And like, I don't know. I I I, I wanted more than that from this trailer like especially with the people that are involved i'm sure it's going to be a good game like the cast is then why are you claiming this is your day one buy (laughs) i i didn't i didn't bring this up because it's my day one buy i brought it up because i think it's important that we that we talk about it certainly not a day one buy for me i just think that it was again something that like the day of the awards i saw this going around a lot and a lot of people again with the same reaction of being like what was this you know has anybody played oh my god Death Stranding? baby game baby yes thank you baby in a backpack i have not played we played that here i've not played baby in a backpack steven have you played baby in a backpack no and i don't really have a desire to play baby in a backpack yeah same <laughs> sorry i'm just cracking I've heard it's just now. i've heard it's just a fedex delivery type service it's what it looks like yes right <laughs> yeah so i'm just wondering if how much of od is actually done like I wonder how many years out that is. That's that's another good point. That's a good argument of maybe the we- reason the trailer is so weird and it's just like mo-capped actors in a dark room is because that's all they could throw together in time because none of it's done yet. But yeah, again, that's not, it's not my day one. I just I wanted to bring that up because it was the most jarring and bizarre. We'll get to my day one later, but Tactic, since you were so incensed by me not shouting out my day one, why don't you shout out your day one? So this is... <laughs> I hate I hate that you're calling this day one by because there's like there is a list of games that I was like I absolutely am stoked for these I am going to day one buy all of these but if I had to pick one I've already been gushing about it because it just it's got rich lore the combat looks fantastic it just looks very exciting to me and we've talked about this on the show before my absolute number one that I am stoked for and we're getting so close to having it Black Myth Wukong this game. We're, we're starting to see more and more gameplay. We're starting to see all of these larger-than-life bosses. We're getting amazing quotes like, oh, goodness without teeth just lets evil roll. Like, oh my gosh. We're getting quotes. And it just, the more I get love kernels from this game, the more and more excited I get about it. So this is the one for me. Yeah, I, I think this one, yeah, like you said, we had talked about this one before. I'm not sure I saw anything in this trailer that, felt particularly new but i know that it looked good when we last talked about it i think this was just like here's more of how good this is going to be and i was like yeah it looks like it's going to be really good so i personally don't have a whole lot more to say about it but yeah this is that one i i do have the release date in front of me so i can tell people august 20th 2024 so still eight months out get hyped we're in the year yeah we're getting we're certainly getting there steven any any game off the big old list that you want to shout out maybe we already mentioned jurassic park survival I feel like, I believe it'd be Tectic. I don't know why you didn't mention this one. 
Tales of Kenzara Zao. Yeah, this one, yeah. Looks- dude, it's on my list. Okay, that's why I said it's really unfair. It's like and and Tales Tales of Kenzara and Prince of Persia. I just like I lumped together. I was like, these are banger side scrollers. I'm getting yeah. them day one, day one. And also, side note. I, did we get a release date on Tal- Tales of Kanzara, or did we just get the game? Which, I by the we way, just got the game. That game looks gorgeous. Like it just looks absolutely gorgeous. We're seeing this like this like African landscape with these waterfalls coming down. The combat looks like it evolves as you as you progress. You get various power ups, and this is just Chef's Kiss side scroller. Mwah. Yeah, I mean, super stoked for this. I, I agree, Stephen. I was surprised tactic didn't mention the, mention this one first because i watched the trailer and i was like okay so it's it's dread like to me this looked like metroid dread and I, i'm saying that like, to its credit like i think it looks like metroid dread with potentially at the very least a different and new story world for us to experience and like looked like it had great boss fights i think the traversal looked really really good this one i don't know if it's day one buy for me but it, it is definitely short list like I, it was just one of the ones i was the most impressed by and i don't usually even like these style games that much but this one piqued my interest yeah so that one looked good and the release date's april 23rd april 23rd so that's soon which is good. Which, by yeah. the way, if we're going to mention that one, we also have to mention that Prince of Persia is coming out with the demo January 18th, which that is another gorgeous side-scroller, fast combat, let's call it a dread game, if that's what we're, we're coining the term he- right here and right now, illegal. I, I just, for me, that's my biggest recent touch point with side scrollers so like i i look at it and i'm like is it does it look like it's as good as dread to me that's like the, where the bar yeah, you need to touch more points then is what it's what it's <laughs> <laughs> i will i will get to work on that january 18th though that is that is quite soon that yeah that's for the demo let me i guess let me circle back because i didn't mention my quote-unquote day one buy boy nerd bomber it's really tempting for me to steal what i would think would be one of yours do it do it pony island 2 panda circus i watched this i texted you i yeah. literally or i put in our discord chat i was like pony island 2 panda circus and you're like what? well that's the thing it, and i was like just trust yeah me. Well, just like trust me. i don't so first of an, all an interesting point about that one is that was part of the pre-show that wasn't even part of the main so there was a pony island am i to understand there was a pony island supposedly pony island i was not aware of it so, so for me it's very simple here it's this looked vaguely similarly similarly meta to inscription and it's by the inscription guy daniel mullins that's frankly all i really needed to know like like they showed us some gameplay that looked really cool and again it kind of it it established that the vibe is going to be similar and that's really all i needed from this well i found it i found it interesting that you guys are referring this back to inscription and yes i know it's part of the same team but really the the thing that i'm thought why you would mention it is really because it was my notes were mini game mayhem like this this screams to me not so much inscription but more warrior wear and it's just a, a slew of these mini game so this games. is this is because you haven't played inscription yet but essentially like inscription is a bunch of mini card games essentially packed into one i, I don't know if i want to call it roguelike yeah you can call it that kind of adventure and it's it's i don't think this is really too spoilery to say like the fact that this very clearly was a game within a game that is like the to me that's the inscription earmark of like okay this is going to be a similar experience and i can expect good things out of that the other thing too i want to mention is like in particular if this is offered at a similar price point to inscription like i can't imagine this would be like a 70 dollar game or whatever that instantly skyrockets the chances of me involving myself in it so like this was one that i saw and you know well, really what happened was my robert pointed me to it and i was like okay this is a for sure thing for me which frankly I do really enjoy, and I have to continue to toot my own horn on this. So typically, as we all know, you don't listen to my recommendations, but not only did my recommendation hit, but now anything by the same guy is like a shoe in for you. So look at me. To the point that I also, (laughs) I I need to seek out Pony Island because I I was not aware of it, which is really, you know, shame on me. We'll do, we'll do one more. I want to swing it. I think Nerd Bomber, you're the person I started with. So I'll swing it over to you. We'll do one more before we take our break and then we'll come back and, and talk some more. All right, so my second big one, Light No Fire. So I never got into No Man's Sky. I think I definitely got, you know, in the mindset when, you know, No Man's Sky didn't really come out to very good reception. There were a lot of issues with it. And in my brain, like, that kind of put Hello Games down my list. I never played the game. I've heard good things about it. It's obviously been around for a decade now, gotten a lot of updates, and is in a really good place where people love the game. 
But I just kind of like wrote it off immediately, which is a terrible thing to do, but I did. Light No Fire. Now, like No Man's Sky is a little bit where there's 10 years of gameplay here and I'm a little daunted and I'm not going to jump in. But Light No Fire is a new game, not so much the space aspect, but more of a fantastical earth that you're exploring. Yeah, this is more like Many Man Ground. I, I don't know what that means. Talking to No Man's Sky. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know, this just look really le- neat. Like the art style, the fantastical creatures, riding freaking dragons, which is something that I've been waiting for for a very long time. And I feel like a true dragon riding experience keeps getting like ripped out of my hands. Cough, cough, scale bound, cough, cough. You're I'd- playing the wrong games. Is there a lot of dragon riding games that oh, yeah. also look like a fun- Skyrim? Okay. But like something about this, and maybe it's just the art style, looks a little bit lighter fare than Skyrim. I mean, I've dabbled in obviously Bethesda RPGs, but this just feels different. And I don't know. I really like this. So I'm super excited for this. I'm really hoping that there's enough here for solo play. Again, I kind of haven't kept track of No Man's Sky at all, but I know a big selling point of that game was that you could play it with other people. I don't, a lot of the games that we saw. And the game awards as a whole are a lot of like online co-op, and like I just I want to be able to play you don't a like game people. single player. Yeah. I do no, I do like people, but it's hard to find people to play these games with. So my, the only way that I can guarantee that I'll get a chance to play it is if I can play alone. I do want to mention one thing about this game that really stood out for me, and if you weren't paying attention, you might have not even noticed it. But you can be many different species of of playable characters yourself. If you were, I know. if you were looking, yeah, you were. And there there was, were like little rabbit dudes. You can be like a rabbit dude. There were things with antlers. There were. It was just a wide breadth of characters, and so it appears to me that you can really, between the exploration, the character options, you can really make this experience your own. I would play this shit so hard, like it's Redwall in a fantasy. Damn! Element. Shout out Redwall. I would be a little mouse coming out of my abbey to ride a dragon. Come at me. Uh, well, you heard you heard her, folks. I'd play it like it was Watership Down. <laughs> Ooh. This one, you know, I don't want to say it got by me. This one, it felt very over my head because I, I have no, I have no No Man's, no Man's Sky experience. No, that's No Man's Sky. This is ground. This is, this is a this new is game, though. Man ground. This is not No Man's Sky. It should be below It felt head. like it looked awfully similar to me. I mean, I, like, I think that I agree that, like, they seem to put a lot of emphasis on the dragon flying slash traversal, which I think was smart. It also looked very, like, generally peaceful, <laughs> which, you know, we talked about that a lot in the indie showcase as, like, being a good thing that I think more games should do, but certainly not a day one buy for me, but, it, you know, it looked it looked good. I also liked the logo, the, like, hand coming up with the, the globe. That's cool. Take a break now, and we'll come back to talk more of the games at the Game Awards, because there's quite a few more. But before we do that, Steven, thanks for all you do for the show. Uh, happy to have you here. As a Patreon producer, you get a leg up in the quiz today because you know what the topic is and probably... I don't remember what I voted for. Oh, wow. Okay. You're proving me wrong immediately. Put that leg yeah. back down. I, yeah. While I'm hosting the quiz, I will I will whisper in your ear what the topic is. It's Lionel Trains. So I, I didn't really whisper it, but you, now you know it. So you have a whole half an episode to not listen to us blather around and go study it. Steven gets input into the weekly game segment on this show. He gets the occasional guest spot, which he's currently enjoying. He gets, of course, the weekly producer shout out, which he is also currently enjoying. And he gets, of course, access to the monthly secret segment and the monthly vlog, all as a result of his support on our highest level of Patreon support, which is the night level. And there's also a Squire level of support, which gets you access to the monthly secret segment and vlog, and a page level, which gets you access to the monthly secret segment. The details on any and all of those levels of support can be found over at patreon.com slash online warriors podcast. Come say hi to us. Say hi to Steven. Consider giving back to this show that has hopefully taught you about what the Game Awards were at the very least. So if this is just your first episode. So thanks again to Steven. We will come back in a minute here to talk through more of the world premieres of the Game Awards. Let's see, Alex. Uh, what do you think of Jaws, which is at 97% Rotten Tomatoes? I find it to be anti-shark propaganda. What do you feel about the Entourage movie, which is at a meager 33%? I think they finally got Hollywood right. How about It Follows, 97%. Worse than your parents giving you the sex is evil talk. How do you feel about Juno, which is at 94%? That would be a movie that celebrates a teenage homewrecker. Uh, how about Bewitch at 25%? Best television adaptation ever put to film. How do you feel about American Hustle at a towering 93%? Overwrought awards bait. Righteous Kill, 19%. 
The movie that Michael Mann wishes he had made when he created Heat. Sounds about right. I'm Julio. I'm Alex, and we are the Contrarians. As you can tell, our thing is that we rage against the Rotten Tomatoes machine. Regardless of what we really feel. Find us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn. Facebook, Twitter, we're everywhere. Alright, we are back to talk more game trailers from the Game Awards. I just hit Nerd Bomber up for a selection, which she made. Steven, I'm going to swing back to you. Any other games you want to shout out? I believe you shouted out Jurassic Park Survival and Tales of Kinzera. It's a lot more on the list. Any other ones that really tickled your fancy, so to speak? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. Cheat away. I'm going to group these. There's two games that I feel like I can group together. And they are from two indie studios where I've loved the games they've done previously, where one is Motion Twin, who did Dead Cells, mm-hmm. and Moon Studios, who did yes. the Ori games. So I want to talk about Windblown and No Rest for the Wicked. They just, I trust those studios. I will get anything they make. And yeah, I just want new games from those studios. Yeah, I mean, No Rest for the Wicked, you know. That looked like extreme, and I haven't played Ori. I think I, I think I watched my wife play the demo of Ori, but I know it's like very highly regarded. It looked very, again, very peaceful, good vibes. No, as for the Wicked, looked like a fairly epic departure from that, where like there was a lot going on, and there's like a creepy Wendigo monster. Yeah, and it's not side scrolling; it's more that isometric view. So yeah, yeah we'll see how that works out. Certainly a me. departure, but looked looked very high quality. Dead Cells is a game. That, yeah, D- Dead Cells is a game that I I should play and should like. I think I blame Hades for getting me into the genre, and I know it's not like exactly the same, but I blame Hades for getting me into the genre because I would have probably looked past this game before. And like, I have Dead Cells; it's been on my backlog for a while, and I haven't played it, so like, I should play this. But like, this is basically that game, but with animals and bunnies and wolves hey just a heads up if you're gonna play windblown it's multiplayer that too so like like, yes like hey friends are over here hello i mourn the days of couch co-op and this appears to be and it looked gorgeous so this This, is this game looks pretty it looked very yeah and with motion twin like they've been supporting dead cells for years there's been multiple dlc releases some free some paid like they just keep supporting that game so if that's something they'll do with this you got a good five six years of content that they can just keep putting out into the game it won't win best community support though that's for that's for Baldur's gate 4 next year the thing that struck me with windblown <laughs> you're so yeah, salty. You, you're really <laughs> upset about it the thing that struck me with windblown that i appreciated from a game trailer was like look at all these cute animals blah 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 like they're going into battle oh my god immediately three of them got cut in half and there's blood everywhere i was like that's that's good Garbage. yeah and yeah, I, I reminds me of Happy Tree. It friends. was definitely a good way to like show, like, okay, this is you know a, ro- a rogue light, and you're gonna like it. Did you just shout out Happy Tree Friends? I did. It went wow, largely. What a throwback. In- <laughs> that shit was disturbing. Why did we watch that? <laughs> I am not aware of Happy Tree Friends. It was like the Fallout Boy little. Good for you. Things. Good for you. Don't look. It, it sounds up. like I might be better off. The combat in Windblown looked, you know, pretty amazing. This is one that, yeah, looks like it places a high premium on co-op. Looked like it was going to be super fun. Looking forward to seeing more on that one. Tactic, I think it's your turn. I guess we're doing turns now. I didn't, it's just kind of how this is going. So why don't you go ahead and uh, take a turn? Blade. All right, done. Blade Yay. looked Blade looked sweet. It had like it almost had like the across the Spider Verse art style to me, and it just it it. The soundtrack was just automatically hitting right when it started. The story looked like it'd be entertaining because it had like the it had a barber cutting Blade's hair and he's like obviously a vampire and he's like crap I cut myself. <laughs> so like there's a like a, a light touch of humor and it just looks it looks sweet. This is going to be good. This is going to be a departure from like bad Marvel to good Marvel. Yeah. Good, good this Marvel. was Well, I think too like this is Arcane and we all know I freaking love Arcane and Okay, yeah, like some of their last games weren't well received, but I enjoyed them and Dishonored will always have a a place in my heart. And so I'm really excited for this. And I think this might be Xbox's answer potentially to Spider-Man and Wolverine. Yeah. Because right now, like if this is an Xbox exclusive, we don't know yet, but Xbox owns, you know, Bethesda, Arcane, 
like they own them. So I would assume that this is probably going to be an exclusive. And I just think this fits the format of, you know, the games that Arcane makes super well. It'll be a little bit of a departure because Arcane usually makes FPS style games. And this is, they said, going to be more third person. But man, I think this could be a real hit. Which, like, you guys know how I feel about third person. As long as it's not first person, I am loving This it. was the moment of the of the whole show for me where that upset me. Because, like, yeah, I watched this and I was like, man, this is going to be so good. And as a PS boy, I don't get a, I, I either won't get a crack at it for a while or I never will. Can come I over. Will, okay, hold on. I will. I have to give a shout out. And I, this is not an ad and I'm not sponsored. But... Xbox Cloud Gaming, if you just subscribe to Game Pass Ultimate, which this will probably be day one because they own the studio, you can literally play on the cloud and for whatever, if you like take a month to play it, you can do it for 15 bucks and play it on your PC or your phone or a tablet and just like connect a Bluetooth controller to it and you can do that. So you don't necessarily like you're not out of the running for this. Like you could also play Starfield that way. It worked fairly well. Like there were obviously a few times that my internet was spotty and it didn't work well. But like for the most part, I was very impressed. So you can play this potentially. Yeah. <laughs> good good input tactic. Yeah, no, this this one looked amazing. I, you know, this again, this wasn't one where we saw any gameplay, but I'm sure when we do, it's, it's going to be good. No, Bomber, did you ever finish Deathloop? Because I know that was, wasn't that the last arcane game? I did. That, like, I, I, I never got uh, all the way into it. And I never finished it. There was the vampire game as well. Oh, gosh. Name. Redfall? It's not braining. Red yes, Redfall, yeah, yeah. which that did not get great reception. But Deathloop, I thought that got a little panned for not great reasons. I like Deathloop a lot. I had a lot. I of didn't know it that. had been panned. I mean, when I was playing it, I was like, like it was given mid reviews. I think is a better way to say that it. was a game that I think I just I didn't get into it at the time that I was playing it. I think if I went back to it under the right circumstances, which I probably will do at some point, like I think I could easily lose myself in it. Okay, getting back to the big list. Maybe we'll each go around and, and do one more. So start thinking about what your what your one more you want is. Or you can do what Steven did and cheat and do two. I think I have to talk about Last Sentinel. I think I think that's what I want my last one to be. I just think this one again, no gameplay in this in this trailer. This was really just like kind of painting a picture of what the world of the game is gonna be. But I was very impressed. I think the vibes were exactly right. So for me, again, I don't know if this is day one buy territory. It's gonna depend on getting a lot more information, but I liked what I saw a lot. So it seemed like a weird robot dystopian future, and I didn't know how to feel. But I would. This is another one of those where I would have liked to see more gameplay and less just movie trailer. Yeah, we, which we will, and, that, and that's a, definitely a fair criticism. You know, there were a lot of other trailers that gave us a lot more gameplay than this one did. You know, we're kind of getting. I thought it looked cool. It though. looked very cool. Yeah, like I, I, we're getting down to a point where there's a lot of other trailers that you know we've talked about. I think a lot of the gameplay heavy ones, which maybe that's not without coincidence that those ones really drew us but yeah the last sentinel i thought looked looked pretty good i also just throw a tiny shout out to the casting of frank stone i have not played dead by daylight at all but i thought that looked like an interesting layout for a game so just shout shout that one out really quick uh let's just kind of dance around now nerd bomber what 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 games do you want to try and try and wrap up with here first one i want to shout out is harmonium just because i think it's a really interesting concept so essentially following the story of a deaf girl who is really into music and she basically then transports herself to this world of you know these fantastical musical looking creatures like most of the creatures that she meets are based on instruments and i just really like you know a game that shows a different part of the population and brings some more exposure to a different segment of the population and i think it could be really cool it looks super cute as well there was some cutesy music it looked kind of like disney-esque in terms of you know the music that we were going to get in the game and so i'm very excited about this and i hope that a lot of people play it the other one that i was very interested in was rocket racing for obvious reasons um we all know that i'm still out here playing rocket league multiple times a week god knows why I put too many hours into that i'm not even very good at it but now they're you know they made a full-scale racing game with cars that can carry over between the games so dude yes. well what's inter really interesting about this one is rocket racing is part of a fortnite whole package and so fortnite's really doing big things and they're and like expanding yeah themselves. expanding their whole thing as as a platform which is kind of exciting i think they're trying to create and there was also an article so i'm not going to take credit for this idea but they are doing i think a better job of establishing like a full-scale metaverse style universe with all of the different facets to their game now and their platform than you know even like meta horizons is so 
kudos, I guess, to them for, you know, keeping the game vibrant and alive. But it took them a lot longer than two weeks to do. <laughs> that is true. Or or a, or a fortnight, if you didn't right, get that. Right, right. Classic. S- Steven, any games you want to you wanna close up with to make sure we get mention of? Well, I'm, one thing I'm surprised by is Nerd Bomber hasn't brought up the God of War DLC that's like out tomorrow. Or I something. was also kind of wondering that. I actually think it might already be out or it's out like Tuesday or yeah. Is it December 12th that comes yeah. out? Yeah, I think so. I am very excited about this because it comes out so shortly. I feel like I don't need to speculate about it or hype about it because I'm just going to play it. Like it's going to be so soon. I'm very excited that it's free DLC and I fully expect these days that when games roll out DLC, anything new is going to be something I have to pay for. And I usually don't do that. So I am hyped about this. I purposely did not uninstall God of War Ragnarok from my PS5. And I'm very jazzed that I'm going to be able to do this. <laughs> Nerd Bomber, I want to just ask this quick question while we're on the topic of God of War, because I'm going to talk about God of War with some significance in my what are you up to update. But yes. is Ragnarok, I don't, I'm sure you talked about Ragnarok on the show, but like I don't remember. Is it uh, it's hard for me to play God of War and imagine a graphical step up of any kind to to the PS5. Is it like how much better could it be? I guess it's like, like maybe you can't answer that, but like I'm playing God of War now which is a PS4 game and I'm like this looks like amazing. How could it get prettier to look at than it is? Is I guess my very broad question. It definitely like there are environments that are very detailed. It's tough cuz like I'm now in my head, when I think of the God of War franchise, I think of Ragnarok, so I can't like unsee you can't that. Differentiate. But I do remember thinking it was like excessively beautiful. Like when I was playing Ragnarok, it was one of the most beautiful games that I've ever played in my life. And so I'm sure there's probably some minute step. I think one of the biggest things, though, the biggest improvements was like the speed between menus and transitions and all that kind of jazz. Yeah, yeah it's and you know I talked about last week. And I'll talk about later, so I don't want to dwell on it. But like. God of War for a PS4 game is like kind of unbelievable like, graphically. So yeah, that that DLC I believe comes out on yeah Tuesday, December twelfth. Tactic that leaves us with you. Any games you want to to wrap up with here? So I want to talk about this more as like a holistic. It's a disappointment, is is what what I want to call this. So Christopher Judge said it well when he came out on the stage when he called out Call of Duty's campaign being shorter than his eight minute speech and that is a fantastic point because the game mecha break was announced and this looked like a sweet gundam inspired robot fighting game but as we continue to hear more about it and read about it and and i'm quoting what's on ign's page they're saying it's a 3v3 6v6 or battle royale multiplayer and that really sucks i just wanted a custom robot fighting along the storylines of Gundam. I watched Gundam as a kid and like, it's like anti-corporate, like fight against dystopia was just like this, such a cool story beat. And I just, I, I liked it. And they just, there was so much potential for just a sweet Gundam game and it looks beautiful, but like, I don't want player versus player, 3v3, 6v3. I don't want that. I just want customize your robot and fight big other robots. That's it. I think... I know that there's a lot of money in these online multiplayer PvP style games. I get it. I really do. That's why we see so many of them. But I really wish that more studios took a look. Like, obviously, sure, they make a lot of money, but there's so much. There's so many of them that I don't think there's enough of a market to play all of them the way that they want because like they they dream of these games being self-sustainable for years then and just being cash cows for a while i just don't think there's that market and if you look at things like god of war the last of us all of the i know i'm uncharted mostly talking about yeah but a lot of playstation games but like even like starfield these all made a lot of money there's something to be said about a single player experience and like there will be some big boss fights here and it'll probably be akin to like raid battles but like that sucks. Yeah. Like, cause, and we did see the big boss fights in in the trailer. But as far as everything that I'm reading right now, it it feels like it could be so much better. So like, I guess I'm just gonna have to dust off my GameCube if I want to play a cool customizing robot experience and just go back to Custom Robo. Shout out to Custom Robo if you guys. Remember I, I definitely agree. You know, th- this trailer definitely surprised me. I wasn't expecting to be as interested in it as I was. For me, though, like, and it was definitely different. It wasn't Gundam, wasn't anything like that. But like, there was a game for the Xbox 360 called Lost Planet, 
I don't know if you remember. I think it's called Lost Planet Extreme Condition. And like half of the game took place where you were like in a like mecha suit and you were like doing stuff. And it was so cool. And I do think there is like probably a space in games for a game like Mecha Break. And I, I agree with you, a game that has a dedicated campaign. I agree generally that like I think a lot of studios are seeing things like Fortnite and like the Battle Royale online multiplayer only experience as being the cash cows. But like, I don't know that those games have the staying power that like yeah the games that we've already mentioned here like last of us uncharted starfield all those games like they they don't they don't necessarily have that it just feels like we're it feels like a diversion from the game video games as an art yeah and more as and i and i get you know you have to make money you have to be profitable but you can I, do I both understand that but like you can, you can absolutely do both and like and like yeah games like fortnite they're like by design very transient feeling and I don't know. Just it, to me, that's not as satisfying. So I, I agree a hundred percent, but yeah, that's, you know, the, the game awards, there were so many more just off the top of my head, usual June visions of mana, lost records, the first berserker, first ascendant, thrasher, hellblade two, Santa was saga, big walk, monster hunter wilds, maybe being one of the biggest announcements. Like those are just the ones that are on the list in front of me here. <laughs> monster hunter wilds. Do you mean uh bird rider three? <laughs> <Yeah>, right. <laughs> There were many, many more besides the ones I even just mentioned. So you can hit us up on on Twitter. Shout us out. Shout out the ones that you liked that we did talk about. The ones that you liked that we didn't. Describe what your experience with the game awards was as a whole. I am at OW86. We have at OW Nerdbomber, at OW Tactic, and our main show account at Online and Warriors. Tell us one. why you agree that Spider Man should have won an award, not any award, just just or any if you award. disagree, or if you disagree, fight Tactic on on the internet. I think that would be good for for everybody. Or or IRL. Or IRL if you can track him down. He's always moving. No one no one can no one can pin him down. Uh, we're gonna move to what are you up to Wednesday? This is the portion of the show where we talk about what we've been up to. And as is tradition, I'm gonna turn it over to Stephen to describe what he's been up to. If he wants to, he can tell us what he's been up to for the past few months. You know, that's really up up to him. So Stephen, the floor is yours. I guess I can list out some things, games I've beaten in the last couple of months, and you can. Stop me if you have questions about any of them. So the big two that came out the same day were Spider-Man 2 and Super Mario Brothers Wonder. So I beat both of those. Mm. And then I beat Super Mario RPG. And so those were kind of the two... Those were the three kind of bigger games. Let me I just... Beat. And then I beat two indie games. Let me games. interject. Did you, did you think that Spider-Man 2 should have won uh, Game of the Year? <laughs> I think Super Mario Brothers Wonder would have been my pick. I think that's my favorite. Hey, that won an award. I know it did. <laughs> okay for yeah i was just, i was just but but that one the dis that one the the nintendo award the best family game yeah spider-man 2 not a family game <laughs> i was yeah. just tr- i was trying to get a rise out of tactic is really all i was doing so uh yeah continue <laughs> and then i beat two indie games one called colored effects which i got a code for from the developer and it's just kind of like a puzzle platformer kind of of a Box Boy meets Portal slash Mario versus Donkey Kong type game, which was really fun where you there's colors on a screen and you can only get one color at a time and each color has a power up associated with it. So like one's a double jump, one's a shooty, one's a dash, one's a you can kind of jump through walls. And so you have to just try solving these puzzles by using these different colors. Currently on sale on the eShop for Nintendo Switch for five dollars. And also, that, that's 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 the standard price. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's I, much, that's when I say on price. sale, what I just mean is that you you don't need a developer code. You can go just go buy it. Yeah, yeah. and I'm sure like it's on Steam. Also, I just looked it up while you were talking, and it looks adorable. Oh my gosh, just downright adorable. Yeah. It is weird because it does have like I think there's like forty or fifty levels, and to start out the game, like every four levels, there's a boss battle. And then after level 20, they just stop with the boss battle. Yeah, and, and looking so, at some of these maps, too, I can definitely see why you made the connection of Mario versus Donkey Kong, because my experience with the original like Donkey Kong Game Boy game, this looks very similar to that. You're kind of like pulling levers and getting yeah. getting bridges to come up, and like it's a puzzle platformer. And then one last Disney game I beat. It's a little older, but I got into a major kaiju monster-type mood, so I played a game called Dawn of the Monsters, which is... Basically, Pacific Rim, a beat 'em up Pacific Rim game where you just you select a character and you just fight through a level fighting giant monsters. Oh, this looks fun! I'm looking at this right now. I like the art style. Yeah, it's nice comic booky kind of art style. It gets, I mean, this plot kind of is just Pacific Rim. There's some 
monsters that come up from these eggs, these nests, and you have to go fight the nests, and you kind of go around the world, and got to jump in your little mech and go fight things. Or you can be like a Godzilla-type creature that's being controlled by people. So, Were you by any chance put in this kaiju mood because of the new Godzilla movie? Is it movie or movies? It's a movie. Then there's the Apple TV show as well. That's the monarch. Yeah. But it mainly, it was just leading up to the movie. And then I, yeah, just kind of, I started the game like in the spring and put it down. And then I just picked it back up again. Because I heard so. that movie's like amazing. I haven't seen it, but. That's another thing I have listed here is Godzilla minus one. Go yeah. see it. It's incredible. I've heard. I've heard. Did you see the, did you see the atomic blast? Oh, it's, it's so That's good. freaking cool. The, the way yeah. his spines go. Yeah. That's freaking sweet. Yeah. It's real good. I kind of want to go see it again. Hey, man. I just want to blast like that. No, I wish my spine did <laughs> really. I wish my spine just generally functioned. Uh, for me, that would be good enough. Cool, man. Anything else to update us on? I guess the only thing is I'm currently playing Cyberpunk 2077. I'm like 18 hours in. It's kind of your standard open world game where there's a ton of things on the map and I don't know where to go. Yeah. I just kind of go random places, do side missions, and the world is kind of gross and not fun to be in. So I'm kind of struggling with that, mm. but yeah. let me know if you find your stride. Cause I've had that game sitting on my shelf for two years and just have not played it yet. Yeah. I have a coworker that's played it. And so he kind of helps cause I can talk with him about it. So that's kind of helping, but that's what I'm trying to get through. Cool. I'm going to take the floor here and just talk about God of War for a couple minutes. Here's the thing about God of War. I, be I believe the last episode we did, I talked about the fact that I had started it and I probably was a little bit milk toast on on my experience like i was enjoying it but i what i've since learned yesterday i played for a couple hours after the after, for the first time in a while just because of circumstantially life got in the way of me playing video games and sitting down to play a game for a mm -hmm. couple hours the game really opens up like like there's I, th I would say the first hour or two i don't know how much time i put into it initially but the first hour or two it's very linear and you reach a certain point nerd bomber i guess i'll just tell i think it's called the lake of like the nine lakes or something i oh, mean i can't think of yep you get to there and like just a lot it's one of those things just a lot of stuff happens and you have a lot of options of like things to do and like side quests open up and like you start encountering enemies that are not just like oh i just swing my axe a bunch of time and they're dead you encounter enemies where it's like oh i can't fight that guy i suck i need to get better before i fight him so the, it, it just the throttle really opens up on the game and i'm um, having a good time I, I guess I don't have. I'm so happy yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot specific to say beyond that point, but like it's really enjoyable, and I'm like, it's the I'm starting to stack up skills, and as a result, the combat is starting to get a little bit more enjoyable too, which I think was one of the things I was complaining about last time. There's certain like many games, like this is not a unique thing to this game, but like you can basically pick how you want to fight enemies, and if you start upgrading the tree in that direction, your life is just going to get better, and you're going to enjoy it more. So, I, like I said, I think there's an hour and a, probably an hour and a half or so in that game, maybe not even that long, where you're kind of trying to reach that point at which the game is like, okay, now you have, you're kind of just building your basic skills. And when you build them enough, the game is like, okay, now you have enough wherewithal where we can just kind of like let you loose and you can go do stuff at your own, you know, accord. And like, it's nice because it's, it's not open world but there's stuff to explore yeah like it's not overwhelmingly open it's still it's still certainly there's a guiding hand in it and like i said if anything the guiding hand is just like oh i'm gonna go down this tunnel and then it's like oh well there's a there's a guy in there that like he hit me once and i died so probably i can't go that way yet <laughs> like it's you know there's stuff like that that's been happening to me but i'm gonna i'm gonna work through that so i'm, I'm enjoying that the other thing i only one other thing i want to shout out before turning it over to you guys is um i watched a romantic comedy on netflix and it was like 90 minutes exactly, I think. And it was just amazing. And it's called Love at First Sight, which I will say is a terrible title. It's a little bit too on the nose. It should have been Love at First Flight. It's a, that's true. So I assume you've watched it? <laughs> yes. Guys, it's really great. It's, it's, again, if you go in with the right mindset and you know that it's going to be 90 minutes of like very saccharine romantic comedy, if you're game for that, it's going to give you exactly what you want in spades. And it was 90 minutes. Did I, mention, did I mention that it was like 90 minutes long? And that's great. It was so short. Good stuff. I just want to shout that out. Uh, I will turn it over now to Tactic to keep us rolling. All right. So the main thing I want to talk about is we started watching Generation V. And if you don't know what this is, it is sort of a spinoff show 
about a bunch of kids who found out that from the aftermath of the boys found out that you know their parents had knowingly injected them with compound v and it wasn't like oh god bless them with these powers it was this corporate corruption that had occurred and so it's it's violence conspiracy that we've loved from the boys is now in this show so it's absolutely fantastic expect the same level of gore and disturbing visuals as the boys and you're in for a good ride cheers cheers anything else nope that's it nerd bomber finish us out here all right so we watched a christmas movie on peacocks this is a peacock original called genie and this is a new movie it has melissa mccarthy in it and she is a genie who contrary to you know pop culture lore genies usually can only give you know three wishes but she can give an unlimited amount of wishes and she is i don't want to call trapped but um a man who is struggling with his family problems like he's working too hard his wife and kid are upset because he keeps missing holidays so they leave him he discovers her you know in trapped box because it's not like a lamp she's in a box and releases her and she becomes you know his genie servant but throughout the course of the movie you know he really just wants his family back and so they end up becoming sort of like friends throughout the entire movie so it's not like a subservient genie it feels a lot like you know the aladdin and genie disney movie sort of you know friendship that gets formed and it was just a very you know heartwarming solid movie there were a lot of like funny little one-liner bits it was cute so i don't think it was like super christmasy per se it all seemed to happen around christmas but i wouldn't say there was like a ton of like christmas specific things happening but for the holidays it was a very feel-good movie and it was funny light cute very good production value like it feels like something that you wouldn't watch on hallmark like you'd go to the movies and see and so if you have peacock check that out because it was cute and i you know i like good cute christmas movies we also watched another cute christmas movie this was on freebie the amazon service called xmas with robbie amell and leighton meester and again, this one felt a little bit more hallmarky and not. This is an insane premise for a movie, by the way. Yeah, the premise. I watched for this the, tra- one. <laughs> <laughs> so, the premise is insane. You have to you have to say what the premise is because it's yeah, it's bananas. Leighton Meester and Robbie Amell are engaged, but she breaks up with him, and then he tells his parents he's not coming home for Christmas because he has too much work to do, and so his parents invite her over. So then, when he shows up to surprise them she's there and they're basically like fighting over who's going to get his family this is the, the story if nerd bomber left me because her family my parents would 100 percent invite him over still <laughs> so. this is yeah it's just it, it looks like it's a cute movie it was cute it's, it's wild premise though yeah like, it was wild it definitely wasn't like the production value of genie this is something that you would see on streaming or like hallmark or something like you would not expect this movie to ever hit a movie theater it's not that type of quality but it was cute and funny and it, sometimes you just need that especially around the holidays this was very christmas focused unlike genie like this was very much leaning into christmas so have you Okay, well, while we're on this topic, and we'll move on to the game in a second, but you you open the Christmas rom com box, mm-hmm. and I just have to pull some things out of it just to make sure you've seen them. Because if you're if you're watching Xmas, if you're thirsting for that kind of content, and you haven't seen, have you seen The Holiday? Yes, we have. That's an old movie. Okay. It's an old movie, but I I'm now I in saw that in I'm watching it every year, and it's amazing. Jack Black as a as a male lead in a rom com is inspired. The second one and the final one that I want to mention. Because Love Actually, is, it's a mainstream one. I'm not even going to mention that one. Have you seen Serendipity? Oh, of course. That movie slaps so hard. I watched it earlier this week. I didn't want to put it in the What Are You Up To? Because it's from like 2001 or something. And I've seen it before. But that's another one that's like, it's an every year watch for me. Their, their Christmas rom-com landscape is like surprisingly lush. It is. If, if those if people don't know. It's like, there's a lot happening. Well, I think there's also that, um, people think that it's all like Hallmark movies, but there are some mainstream not. holiday rom-coms out there. I believe, is it called Love Hard, too? The one with... um. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. What is her name? She gets catfished. Mm-hmm. I cannot think of her name. That one's on Netflix. That one's pretty good. Yeah. And there's and obviously, mixed in with that, there's like a billion Hallmark movies and like some movies that are on like Netflix that look like they are basically Hallmark movies. Yeah, like the like, Lindsay Lohan I know Lohan Vanessa Hudgens has all the... Lindsay Lohan one and then Vanessa Hudgens has like the Christmas Prince, which there's like six of them, I think. It mixed in with those, there's like some really legitimately good rom-coms that just happen to take place on Christmas. So... That's just, a, I guess, a, a PSA. And I could talk about that for another hour if I if I really wanted to, but I don't. Let's talk about 
I, I say Lionel. The Lionel trains. I don't know if it's Lionel or like Lionel or whatever. But guys, come on. It's train sets. You know, maybe you had one when you were a kid. I did not have a Lionel train set. I had a, I don't actually don't know what it was, but I know it wasn't Lionel because I think it was like bigger. Very Christmassy thing, these train sets. So I assume that's why this topic was selected. You guys know the drill. I have a bunch of questions in front of me. All of them are numerical. I'm going to go through them one by one. We have three contestants today. I will go through the records. Nurbomber 13 and 10. Tactic 11 and 13. Myself 11 and 16. Of course, not playing. Steven 3 and 1. Uh, Sterling record. And I would in particular like you to win because it means Tactic will lose. And our research department has informed me that I guess I have a chance to like actually not lose if Tactic loses out and if I win. Tactic, isn't that what you determined? Yeah, I have to lose this week and next week for you. I, and next week against you to lose. Yeah. So so if I win, statistically, it is what, an improbability for you that. to Steven's win. Steven's in a kingmaker situation where he can basically decide if he wants that to happen or not. And, and, and I'll, it's I'll really both do his heart him desire. and Nerd Bomber have hold your fate in their hands. Right. I really want you to watch Hawkeye. I, I feel safe in this in this scenario, if only because I'm not I'm not currently playing. But you know the drill, you all get an answer of one or, or a plus one once per game. I have five questions and a tiebreaker. Let's get right into it. These are now valuable collector's items. Let me start by saying that. We'll get into the history a little bit more later. To date, the most valuable vinyl train set ever sold was the 1934 standard gauge diesel set. It was in mint condition with the original box and was sold to an unknown collector who remained anonymous for how much money in u.s dollars we will start with with a nerd bomber of course because she is in first place at the moment how much would you buy a 1934 standard gauge diesel set for twenty thousand dollars okay we'll swing it over to tactic next so a mint condition you said that's the standard scale not the hl scale standard oh geez we got an expert here standard gauge diesel set 1934 okay, so that that runs for 60k i feel like you know this and over to steven you sounded very confident. Those feel so low to me. Like I was like, oh, it's going to be like 2.5 million. But now I don't think that. I'm going to go. I'm going with my first instinct of 200,000. Your head was in the right place. Uh, it is. I will say it is by far the most expensive auction sell ever for the Lionel train sets. $250,000. Someone bought this for someone presumably with a very significant, you know, disposable income. So uh, Steven. Steven's on the point. board. And not Tactic. That's cool for me. Let's get more current with it. We'll, we'll, we'll stick with the financials and we'll say that given that it is the holidays, we need to talk about the Polar Express if we're going to talk about trains. Lionel incidentally makes a Polar Express set. What is it currently selling for on Amazon.com right now? And Tactic, you will start this time. And what scale? Hold on. I need to pull up the link I had up before. O gauge. Does that tell you what you need to know? I didn't realize you were a train guy. It's very uh, strange for me. That goes for $787. Okay, Steven. I, I don't. I'm. I feel intimidated by this trade knowledge. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I think you no, should. For real. It's, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, t- I'm intimidated. I'm not even playing. I live with him and we didn't even own a train I'm, set. I'm blowing t- smoke, guys. I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's very I dab- effective. I dabbled with my dad when I was a child. That was it. I'm going to say 225. And Nerd Bomber. I'm going to undercut. I feel like it can't be that expensive. 50 bucks. It can be that expensive. Steven, once again, just crushing. It's currently on sale for 25% off. I will say that much. It doesn't really matter because I think Tactic, you said like 700 something dollars. It's currently on sale for 25% off. It's $360 Damn. marked off from $480. Well, I was just so, shopping for sets and I could have sworn I saw that one for what? Okay, okay, hold on. So you were just shopping yeah, so, for so, sets. Yeah, for around the Christmas tree. Okay, well... Okay, You're so a train expert. Fair, his mom, his mom bought us a set. I did not realize that you were the one pulling the strings here and doing all the train research. Excuse you me. tactic, whether you like it or not, you it was are, not a hundred dollar train set that we when she bought us me, uh, a seven hundred dollar train set that she bought us. Let me be clear. You're a certified train expert, and you're getting absolutely crushed right now. So just bear that in mind as we move on to question three. Let's get let's go let's go back. When was the Lionel Manufacturing Company founded? It's me, right? No, it's it's Steven. No, it's okay. me. You. I'm gonna say 1905. Okay, over to over to Bomber. I really, I really like that. That was gonna be my answer. 1906. I'll do it. 1907. Oh, shut up! <laughs> wow, that's extremely mean, and uh, it did not pay off. All three of you busted. What? Actually. Oh. 1900. So you guys were really close, but a bust is a bust, yeah. you know. It was founded by Joshua Lionel Cowan in 1900 in New York City. Now, Cowan's first electrical train, 
the Electric Express, debuted in 1901 and was initially designed as a display for toy stores. Train caught on and soon Lionel was manufacturing model electric trains for Wait, consumers. Wait, hold on. It was the the question was when was the train company founded? That's correct. As a company that manufactures train toys? I asked when the Lionel Manufacturing Company was founded. Don't test me. I'm the I'm the I'm the quiz man. The Electric Express, the first train ever. How many did Lionel produce? How many were sold, rather? How many of those were sold? This is just for funsy now. No. There's two questions left, and it's two to nothing to nothing. And Nerbomber, you will go first. Wait, hold on. Repeat that? I'm trying to figure out the scale now. Or like the how much I need to say. It's HO scale. <laughs> Repeat the whole question? Like the TLDR. The Electric Express was their first train that was ever made. It was designed as a display for toy stores. How many were sold? Okay. Okay. Well, the Electric Express. For a se- I wanted to make sure, because for a second I thought you meant like electric, all of them, and I was like, well, that's going to be a big number. Just the mm. first model they ever made. Yeah. Okay. 300. Okay. Tactic. See, that's a good guess, because if I'm following your history, it was it was made for a display. This was in the 1900s. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it was like six of them. And Steven. It's a low number. I'm going to go... I haven't used my one. I'm going to say seven. Boy, just expertly done. If I may, Stephen, that was that was truly an art form. Twelve was the answer. So Stephen uh, takes his third point. And now, yes, we are just playing for fun. Yeah, so you, you were right on the money. I mean, they were designed as displays. I assume they were designed as displays for, like, very big stores in New York, like Bloomingdale's and, you know, Macy's and what have you. So they only needed 12 at the time. They, of course, made the transition to being produced for consumers and the rest is history in what year were lionel trains inducted into the national toy hall of fame this is our last question considering that steven has nuked you guys from orbit tactic you will start us off here this moved to the national toys hall of fame in 1967 okay steven i feel like the national toy hall of fame is newer i'm gonna say 1990 and nerd bomber 2000 okay nerd bomber you got on the board 2006. Steven, you were correct. The National Toy Hall of Fame, I believe, is fairly new. I believe it started in the 90s, but uh, Lionel Trainset did not hit the list until 2006. And the interesting thing here is it was the first ever electric toy to hit the list. So there you have it. Nerbomber got on the board with a, uh, essentially a pity point. Tactic for all of his train bluster, talking about gauges, fat goose egg. So No, I had a point. You did not have a point. I did have a point. What was your point? That you don't know trains? Yeah, that's... Get wrecked. Oh my god, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, that's right. We all busted. You all busted, you know? so you got no points. And Steven... I mean, that's not how it goes. The, 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 it is the how it goes. The proclaimed expert yeah. always gets, like, white. I, it, I, it's happened to me before a few times, and it feels bad. So I'm not going to rub it in your face too much. I just wanted to take a, a moment there, and it was it was really fun for me. So, Tactic moves to 11 to 14. Nerd Bomber to 13 to 11. Steven to 4 and 1. Next week, uh, Tactic and myself will be... That's that boy, Super Bowl mode of 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 the quiz. So that's going to be exciting. That brings us to the close of the episode. I want to thank Stephen for being here with us uh, to talk through the game awards. Stephen, any parting words? Anything you want to shout out, or just you know, is this a stay safe and keep podcasting situation? Go see Godzilla. I said it once. I'm saying it again. Yeah, it go see Godzilla minus one. It deserves repeat. It's so good. Excellent. Well, thank you again for joining us, Stephen. Thank you again for joining us, listeners. And uh, again, hit us up on our Twitters. Let us know what you thought of the Game Awards, what we missed, what we really should have talked about, or what we got wrong. And hit us up on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review there. Hit us up on Patreon. And, uh, you know, consider giving back to the show. In the meantime, y'all stay safe now and keep on podcasting.